What's happening and welcome to The Real Outdoors. You read that title right. Today we are going to talk about barefoot hiking. Got a couple things to get out of the way before we get to that interesting title. First, this is not a sponsored video. I just wanted to get that straight from the beginning. However, I have worked with Zero Shoes, which is one of the shoe companies I'm going to talk about. I have worked with them in the past. They have sent me products to review, but really that has nothing to do with this video. Those were completely separate issues. I've always been a supporter of Zero Shoes since they first started, back when all you had was a do-it-yourself option and now they have all kinds of different shoes. But I just want to be clear, this is not sponsored by them or anybody else. This is just offering up my opinion for whatever it's worth. Again, not a sponsored video. Lately, I've been seeing a lot on the old interwebs about barefoot hiking. Is it okay to do? Do you barefoot hike? What do you recommend if you're gonna barefoot hike? All these different questions I've seen on forums, on YouTube, all over the place. So I figured that would be a good time to bring this subject up. Barefoot hiking is something I've been doing for a very long time, and we will get into the details of that after I tell you why I even started barefoot hiking. So we have to go way back to 1993. I was in a motorcycle accident and I shattered my right ankle. As a result, I have persistent pain in that ankle of varying levels. Walking definitely causes that pain to increase. Running is almost unbearable. I can do it, but it's really painful to run. And hiking with a backpack, of course, adds that little extra weight, and so that adds some pain to my ankle. So I spent a lot of time in order to figure out how I could more comfortably participate in outdoor adventures and not have to worry so much about how much my ankle hurts. And of course, that travels all the way up your leg and then you end up with knee pain and hip pain, all from that one ankle that's been injured. What I found over the years is that the closer I am to barefoot, the less pain I experience. You probably heard of the book Born to Run. A lot of people learn about barefoot running and barefoot hiking from that book and learn that walking barefoot, kind of the way nature intended, can alleviate a lot of that pain. One little warning I would give you is to start slow. You're not gonna go out and through hike the AT barefoot or anything like that without working up to it. It's just like any other muscle group. You've gotta get your ankle and feet muscles strengthened and prepared for it. The other thing I have going for me is my feet are pretty rough and tumble to begin with. So I don't really have an issue with the terrain and rocks and things poking at my feet. It doesn't bother me too much. Some people, like my wife, she has soft, delicate feet, so barefoot hiking may not be for them, those types of people. Just something to keep in mind before we get into uh, more detail. I've barefoot hiked in California, Utah, Florida, North Carolina, pretty much anywhere you can imagine, I have done a hike barefoot, including that Half Dome Day hike that I mentioned last week, I did that partially barefoot. I did the Angel's Landing, which was another one of my favorite hikes that I mentioned last week. I did part of that barefoot. Even with the terrain, really didn't give me too much of a trouble. I've hiked to the Delicate Arch barefoot. Again, lots of varying terrains. I've even hiked barefoot in Alaska. As you can see, lots of different terrains, lots of different climates, still hiking barefoot, no issues. No fungal diseases. I know that's one that comes up a lot. Uh, no tenderness or anything like that. And best part, no pain in that in injured ankle. As I said, the closer I get to barefoot, the better. Every now and then though, I like to have something just to kind of protect my feet, especially really gravelly or rough terrain when you're hiking on those types of trails. It's nice to have at least something to protect your feet. So, the first thing I started out with was these. These are unshoes, and I mean, I've almost worn through them. You can see that the the tread is almost completely gone. You can feel where my heel hits and my toes hit in the sole of the shoe. But these are very similar to Chaco's. You can see the big wide straps that you have here on the unshoes. And I mean, I've put a lot of miles on these shoes. Uh, these are the sandals I wore in that Half Dome Day hike. I've worn them all over the place, really. These are, for years and years, were my go-to sandals for hiking anywhere I went. But these are great. You know, it's a nice, thin, really hard to see on camera, but it's a super thin sole. I mean, you can barely even see how thin it is. There you go. 
super thin sole, very close to barefoot. Like I said, use these for years and hundreds of miles, no issues at all, very comfortable. In fact, when you put your foot in it, it's almost like your foot floats in there. So there's not even any rubbing or blister issues that you run into with these sandals. So those have been great. Next, I went up to these, which are the Zero Shoes Z Trails. And these have been my go-to for the last two years. Uh, absolutely love these. It's a little bit stronger tread, a little bit thicker. It has kind of a lip on the back. You can see that lip on the back. It kind of keeps your heel from sliding out of the back. Uh, the bed, the footbed right here, it's a little softer and cushier than the unshoes, uh, but the straps are a little thinner. I actually would prefer the straps to be thicker like the unshoes, but I haven't noticed a performance issue with, with the Z-Trails. I mean, they've been fantastic as well, and they show almost nowhere after two years of using these for my primary hiking shoe. Those have been fantastic. I think they look stylish. Wife doesn't think so, so much, but you know, I'm used to Chacos and Tevas, and I think they look very similar, so those are my go-to hiking sandals. Now, in some instances, especially with the Boy Scouts, I have to wear a closed-toed shoe. Other instances, I also have to wear a boot, so that it has to come up your ankle a little bit, kind of like at Philmont. Philmont doesn't require it, but they strongly recommend it. Uh, Northern Tier, when I went there in Canada, they required a boot versus a shoe or a sandal or even a water shoe. And so, what did I do in those instances when I wanted to remain as close to barefoot as possible, but I had to wear a boot? Well, these were my boots for Philmont. These are also zero shoes. I'm telling you, I love zero shoes. I think I have seven or eight pairs of zero shoes from the sandals to the boots, to dress shoes, to casual shoes. They have so many different styles. And like I said, this is not sponsored by zero shoes. I'm just a really big fan of zero shoes. They have a lot of really good options if you wanna remain close to barefoot. Because of the injury and because of the pain issues I have, regardless of what I'm doing, whether I'm at a workplace, a meeting, um, or just regular outdoor adventures, I wanna be as close to barefoot as possible and Zero Shoes gives me a lot of those options. And so this is a great example. This is the boot I wore to Philmont. This has 120 miles on it just from Philmont alone, let alone all the practice hikes and everything going up to it. As you can see, there's almost zero tread wear on this, but you can see they're also very flexible. I mean, I could roll these up and put them in my backpack if I wanted to. They were extremely comfortable, provided just enough ankle support, nice zero drop sole, zero drop, zero shoes. Yeah, and it's super thin. Uh, they do have an insert, but you can take that out which I have done in some of my Zero Shoes. They actually, if you look, it has this piece of material here attached to the lacing that actually tightens this up around the heel. I had no issues with blisters. Didn't even get any hot spots wearing these. They're extremely lightweight. I mean, they weigh ounces. I, I think they're 13 ounces for both or something like that. They're very, very lightweight boots. Really big, wide toe box. So even when you're coming downhill, your toes have plenty of room. Uh, I mean, you can see it's as wide as my hand spread out there. So great pair of boots, and they're actually in good enough condition that I would wear them to Philmont again this year, but I got an upgraded pair from Zero Shoes, and I'll show you those. So these are, they're actually a different model or different style of boot. They're still very similar, uh, but these are waterproof, and I have tested them out, I don't think any boot is truly waterproof, but it does keep your foot dry even in a downpour for quite a long time. So I, have, I am impressed with the waterproof capabilities of it. Same thin sole with just a little bit more tread on this one. And I really like this. They improved the back of the heel support. It's neoprene now and a lot more flexible. So your foot has a little more movement and your ankle has a little more movement while still giving you the support of a boot. So this is what I'm going to wear at Philmont this year is the waterproof version with more tread than these. So just a slight upgrade, still very similar. Those are my go-tos for hiking in the outdoors. Like I said, I prefer to go barefoot 
or sandals. Given the choice, every time, that's what I'm gonna hike in, either barefoot or in sandals. I almost always carry my sandals with me because on longer hikes, your feet will get worn out, especially if you're not doing this. As I said at the beginning, you have to start slow with this. You have to build up strength in your ankles and feet in order to become comfortable hiking barefoot. And some trails make it really difficult. If it's really cold, you may need to wear a boot or, or a trail shoe or something like that. Zero Shoes also offers trail uh, shoes, like trail hiking shoes type of model. Like I said, Philmont recommends the boot, so I got the boot and I do like the extra support when I'm going up and down mountains. But if it were up to me, my only choice would be these every time. But like I said, sometimes I have to have closed toes, sometimes I have to have boots, and so then I'll go with the Zero Shoes boots. Anyway, that's my story on barefoot hiking. I can tell you, I absolutely love it. It has made a world of difference. My injured ankle doesn't bother me near as much. So for me, that's the choice I'm gonna make. You have to make the choice for you. I, get, I see a lot of people asking, should I barefoot hike, should I barefoot hike? It's really up to you. You have to make that decision if it works for you. Uh, I've actually heard of a lot of people using sandals to hike in. I even had a, a guy I met that hiked in Crocs, which to me seems very uncomfortable. But for me personally, the closer I am to barefoot, the happier my feet are and the more enjoyable the hike. That's my two cents on barefoot hiking. I'd love to hear yours down in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you in the real outdoors.